text. Looks like we're going to be okay. Uh, yep. All right. <clears throat> so we're uh, we'll roll the show out in a couple of minutes. Just let me uh, pull it up on the on the uh, my phone so I can see any comments, and then share it out through the network. <clears throat> Who we got in here? Hello, CG, Christine Rose, Karen, and Michael <laughs> Van Patten, the MVP. All right, so we're live on Facebook. Uh, let's see. Oops, not showing up yet. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Got 10 people in the house so far. If these shows resonate with you, please share so we can stay above the algorithms at Facebook. We are on Facebook for this show. Hi, John. I love you, Christine Rose. <laughs> you too, Christine. <laughs> That's okay, a let's see. Shout out to the event is happening. Jen McCarty, 13th Dimension of Consciousness, Rising Above, Lisi and Damon, Spiritual Healers, 5D High, High Vibe Tribe, is Sean Christopher and that bunch. New Earth Ascending Soul, Ignite Your Light, Your Divine Self, The 1111 Movement, Jessica Woods, Infuge Light, Gregory Jones, Galactic Federation of Light, Twin Flame Healing Network, Intuit, and uh, all right, that's a, that's a few out there. Hello, everybody. Donna Davin, <coughs> Marino, Irina Iskoff, Anne McKean, Terry Willette, Michael Harrell, Debrielle, uh, Vicki, Diane Bailey, and Julie Severn. And Julie, I will get to your message, I would imagine, the next two or three days when I get a, brand, a chance. <laughs> so <clears throat> we got four shows today. This is our third one. I'm lo really looking forward to this. Morgan has uh, spoken very highly of John. And as I've become friends with him on Facebook, I've picked up on a lot of the stuff he's doing. Also, I've got a, a little backdrop before we start the show. Let me pull that up. Uh, let me go to my page and we'll get right on it and introduce John to the Sology crowd and the Sology crowd of John. All right, let's see. Where are we at? Courtney, John. Okay. Okay. Hello, Linda Winger, <laughs> Sonia Sandoval, Hola, Edmana, Sasha Grace. How you doing? Christine Storin. 24 people in the house. Thank you for all for everybody for coming. Let me give you a little backdrop on our guest, John McIntosh. Welcome to Soul Speaks 5D. I'm Todd Medina. This is the Soul G1 Network. As we uh, do our best every day to continue adding frequencies to an ever expanding vibration of the mirror of the universe, Soul G is just another name for the energy that we all share. All right. For decades, John McIntosh was a successful entrepreneur, eventually becoming a multimillionaire and traveling to many parts of the world, speaking to tens of thousands of people about personal development. He had been a student of spirituality since 1976, touching in the most well-known beliefs, but found that with that wisdom and having reached the top of what the world calls success, he felt empty and unfulfilled. As a result, in January of 99, he left behind, totally committing himself to self-discovery no matter what. And from then on, he focused entirely on this fire request, leaving no stone unturned. He is the author of 24 books, three novels, and a screenplay. And on most days, posts a new article orient oriented around self-inquiry to his blog and on various social media locations. We've got his website information, his author page, first chapter of his audio book, You Are God, uh, a Tumblr archive of many of his articles, and more. Welcome, John, to Soul Speaks 5D. Thank you for honoring us with your presence and sharing space with us today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's our pleasure. It's our honor. So, uh, yeah, you've been in this game a long, long, long time. A, a, a thousand plus shows. I can't, I can't even, I could probably name on one hand the people that talked about 1970. Most of them are 80, are, are really 2000s and some in the 90s, some in the 80s, but 70s, I think I've, only met four or five people in eleven hundred shows. What was it like to wake up that early in the game? Well, I wouldn't call it waking up. I would call it uh, intense frustration. Um, I was uh, an entrepreneur from the time that I was uh, probably able to speak, but certainly from my twenties. Read Think and Grow Rich when I was twenty, and 
uh, that got me going. Yeah. Uh, and I decided that I probably could create anything and uh, went ahead and created a number of businesses and um, uh, was an entrepreneur, which means that I was broke a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, a few of them uh, did extremely well. Um, but then they crashed and burned and uh, had a number of wives uh, in between, uh, which also crashed and burned. And uh, a picture started to form that, uh, you know, maybe it has to do with me. And uh, so that's when I started to turn within. And then because of that question, um, I met someone that introduced me to uh, spirituality, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically was completely devoured by what I recognized was totally different than simply creating what you want in the material world, which I knew how to do. Yes. Um, this was different. But I was trying to dance at two weddings, meaning um, succeed in the material world, 3D world, uh, whatever name you want to use, and also um, uh, succeed so-called, as I thought then, in the spiritual world. And you can't do both. Many, uh, many people that I met, thousands over the years, uh, tried to make their 3D world work better by applying uh, uh, sort of like icing on the cake uh, spirituality to it. Um, but it doesn't work. Eventually, you have to make a decision. That, uh, I'm all in. Yeah. Um, this is it. No matter what, uh, nothing else takes precedence. And, um, and so by the time 1999 rolled around, I was extremely wealthy. Uh, all my friends were millionaires, a few billionaires, uh, lived the life of the rich and famous that you see. I mean, literally at the top, swinging with the highest, traveling around the world, all the best places, everything you can imagine that you've seen, I lived that life. And I was completely miserable. Uh, and virtually everyone that I knew, even those that uh, were doing better than me, so-called better, they were miserable too. Yeah. I mean, they wore a nice mask, but they were miserable too. Not because they were rich, because so many people say, well, you're rich, so, um, you know, money, money doesn't work. Uh, there's nothing wrong with money or wealth at all. It's a question of, do you have it or does it have you? Yeah. And in almost every case, it has you. <laughs> and so there's never enough. You always want more. And your conditioning, uh, which certainly was peaking at that time for me, um, made me constantly looking for something more. Yeah. But I couldn't find it. I mean, I was at the top. What else can you have? You have more millions, more houses, more, more of everything. Uh, that's not going to make it work. So I just decided that I would do anything to what, what I called then be free. Yeah. Um, and I'd read everything um, uh, that you could probably find uh, lots of obscure things in spirituality, certainly everything in self-development, so-called self-development, which is also an illusion. And uh, nothing worked. So it was kind of like the baby steps of surrender. Um, but I, I had an enormous arrogance at that time, which was, if you like, a prerequisite for getting to where I was in the material world. So that had to be uh, I had to be brought to my knees. <laughs> Castrated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, and so the, the money disappeared very quickly, millions, uh, all my possessions, everything. And uh, I met to what I would call a Cali energy uh, that I uh, lived with for about nine years. And that brought my arrogance down to my knees, yeah. uh, where I was then ready to meet a much hotter energy, another Cali, but much hotter, a, a divine feminine energy. Um, and that brought me to my belly where, uh, basically about five years ago, I, uh, you could say I died the identity, John McIntosh died. I still have a passport yeah. and, uh, and a license, but there's no John McIntosh anymore. Wow. Yeah. And what that's, I love, I love the sound of that. What, what was it, it wasn't so good with that. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We well because of people like you, we many of us have gone through the same thing. We thought it lasted a long time, but yours was much longer. But the loss I was just stubborn. Yeah, well, I think uh, yeah, I can relate to that totally, absolutely. Um, so when you got to the point of you lost this identity, what does that feel like? Taste like? 
smell like? I mean, what is well, that? Well, you could turn it upside down and say that it's nothing. It's like no thing. It's yeah. nothing. Emptiness or nothing is what the absolute is, is what one or you can yeah. call it oneness, but one is nothing. So there is no feeling to the quote unquote loss of identity, loss of yeah of the what i call the false self i don't use the yeah. word ego because there's yeah. so many connotations to that i call it false self and uh, so it's really nothingness yeah and what that does is it makes you completely open and when you're completely open then the self which is another word for the absolute or one flows through you unrestricted when you're conditioned, conditioning is attachments, uh, identifications, and expectations, which makes up the false self-identity or the person that most people call themselves. Yeah. When those things are there, that's what creates their world. Their world is totally unique. Their universe is totally unique as a result of the light of the one flowing through awareness, flowing through consciousness, and then flowing through the mind, which is also an illusion and creating a unique world, very specific to you, you meaning anyone. Yeah. Um, there are similarities, obviously there's traffic lights down at the corner, we'd all agree on that. And, you know, we know the grocery store is over there and we know that, uh, the, you know, it gets dark at night and we agree on certain things, but our world ostensibly, which is totally an illusion, as long as it's related to time and space or separation is unique to our conditioning, our specific conditioning, which makes it, as I think you mentioned the word mirror of the universe earlier. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. It's, it's you uh, manifested outside of what most people think of as themselves, which is their body, mind, identity. It's not themselves at all. Yeah. It's just an instrument. Wow, yeah. So when you're nothing, you don't see the world the way the false self sees the world, which is in separation. Separation results in conflict, chaos, imbalance, because without separation, you don't have time and space. You don't have a from here to there manifestation possibility. You can't have a universe without the concept of separation. You can't have a manifested universe. So you must have chaos as well. And it's not fixable. This is where the vast majority of spirituality is trying to fix the world. It's not fixable. Yeah. Um, it can be uh, dissolved, but it can't be fixed because that's the nature of separation, which yeah. is an essential, uh, an essential aspect of manifestation yeah. or the one absolute actualizing itself so that it can play, yeah. <laughs> play with itself, basically, <laughs> <I like that. laughs> and, know, and know itself. I like that. Um, so, you know, the higher the top, the lower the drop. People say, well, you know, how can God allow this, that, or the other terrible thing to happen? Well, the opposite side of that is the so-called bliss or ecstasy that's possible, not without which you must have the, the, the drop. Yeah. And there's no judgment on the part of one looking at this high and low scenario. It's like a roller coaster. And everybody has experienced this, whether it's in their job or whether it's their education, their family, certainly in marriages and relationships, uh, a roller coaster. No matter how good it is, there's always a roller coaster going on until that roller coaster becomes, until you become satiated with it or frustrated, totally frustrated with it, you're not going to turn within 100% and say, I give up totally you're going to say i give up or i surrender except for and yeah. then the shopping list of things that except for yeah that doesn't work there's nothing like throwing absolutes down on the universe <laughs> you'll have you you'll have a come to jesus meeting real quick well you know like the, the bible does say you god is not mocked you can't fool mother nature i think was a commercial years ago yeah. you can't yeah. fool god it knows if no matter what really is no matter what but when it is no matter what, then the, new, the universe rushes to you yeah. and brings you all kinds of quote unquote shit uh, yeah. to take you very, very quickly back to nothingness. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, when someone has really thrown themselves totally into the fire of who they are not, uh, they very quickly burn up the conditioning and become nothing. And that nothingness is total conscious awareness of who you really are, which is 
beyond God, actually. God is consciousness. God is I am. It's the absolute, which is nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so this this whole this whole period was through the latter part of the last century, and then what you hit two thousand start coming into this period where people start talking about well YK two thousand Y Y two K, and then twenty twelve the Mayan calendar. What's it been like for you to watch the collective begin to go through what you've gone through? With complete respect to those that, that follow this, which I was you know, right at the front of the pack for a long time, all of what you just explained is a dream. Um, we go through a cycle. Um, you probably are very familiar with this. Our particular solar system goes through a, about a 26,000 year cycle where for about um, uh, 10,000 years, uh, we're in the divine masculine, which becomes very dysfunctional, called the patriarchy that we're just ending now. Uh, then it goes through a, a period of uh, balance uh, for about 2,000 years, and then it goes into a matriarchy, which then beca that becomes imbalanced, and that cycle repeats over and over again. And, um, and so for the last 100 years, we've been coming into the balancing effect of the divine feminine on the dysfunctional divine masculine patriarchy. Yeah. But all of that is a dream. None of it's yeah. real. It's just a story. That's just and the program. And it's part of what pulls a tremendous number <clears throat> of spiritually oriented people, including myself for many years, into an out there experience yeah. of trying to fix the world, first of all, then maybe fix themselves and then maybe um, uh, wake up. And mm -hmm. I don't mean the kind of wake up that many spiritual people have. God bless every one of us uh, that is aware that it's an illusion. But I mean the wake up that you are actually God, you are yeah. actually the absolute. Yeah, it's totally different when there's nothing sticking. Yeah. Um, so the dream is fine, and all these stories about dimensions and masters and entities and psychic phenomena and all these these things are wonderful. Tarot card readings and you know crystals and stones and healing and uh, you name it. You know the list is endless. All of this is part of the dream because anything that has a beginning and an ending, anything which is finite, is not real. Yeah, uh, it's only that which is real, um, which uh, ha is unborn, um, that is worth putting one's attention on if one wants to be free. But you don't get there until your level of frustration or satiation is over the top. It has to be a hundred percent. Yeah, and then you'll say, "I'll do anything," and then Source will bring you Source, which is basically just you talking to you, will bring you a shitstorm. Um, of your conditioning, your own personal conditioning. And it's not packaged nicely. No, <laughs> no it's not. <laughs> the, and, yet, and yet you can feel, I certainly did, you can feel the enormous blessing of the fire. Yeah. It's what the burning bush metaphor means. You know, it, it, It's a fire that burns without consuming. It only burns what isn't you. Yeah. Uh, it, it's painful because you're saying goodbye. You're dying. That's basically what real death is. You're dying to who you're not. And yeah. some of your uh, your things, you're, you're pretty stuck on. You know, you're pretty keen oh, yeah. on. Um, yeah. it, it can be the simplest little thing. If you look at all the dramas and movies, it can be like, you know, mama's brooch. You know, this, uh, give up everything except for mama's brooch. Uh, or, or, of course, your family, or your, which you may or may not like. But let's say you love them. Oh, no, no, I couldn't give <laughs> that up. <laughs> Um, or, or your guru, if you have a, if you have a guru, oh no, I couldn't give that up. Are you kidding? No, you have to give up everything. That's yeah, like Ram Dass says, Ram Dass says, if you think you're awake, go spend some time with your family. Right? Uh, yeah. That's, and it's uh, a blessing when you have a dysfunctional family. Yeah. Which I certainly did. Yeah. Uh, because it allows you to recreate all of your conditioning. I don't use the word karma very often, but conditioning is the same thing. Yeah. It allows you to recreate all of it so that it can all be burned away or so that you can step off the wheel of karma or conditioning and directly into the self. And then it all falls away. You don't have to go through millions of years of lifetimes of fixing karma, which is not a possibility. Yeah. So I like what you said. Of, I, I love what you, I love what you said about the, um, we have a delay. I'm sorry. Uh, I love what you said about then the shit storm comes. 
and it's like a specially customized uh, experience for you based on your conditioning. Yes. You know, that's, that's a, I've never heard anyone put it that way, but, it, but if it's I think a mirror. About my house, yeah. It's, it's yeah. just like you said, a mirror of the universe. And it's, it's absolutely precise. There isn't a single thing that happens while you're still sleeping and, and you're still sleeping until you are totally one and aware with the absolute. Um, your life is predestined every moment of it from your condition, which you created in order to manifest um, the world that you're playing in as the God that you are sleeping. So when it shows up, it's absolutely precise. For example, uh, take 9-11. Uh, there were some people that were sick, uh, missed their, their train, missed their bus, uh, didn't make it to work. They were late. And, and consequently, they didn't die. Yeah. And there are others that weren't supposed to be there that showed up that day. Yeah. So n nothing happens by accident. Everything is absolutely precise. There are no accidents. There's no coincidence. There's no chance. There's no luck. Everything is precise. And it's all orchestrated to bring you, meaning anyone, home. Yeah. As, as terrible as a lot of it looks. Yeah. Well, you know, and from your perspective, too, I'll give you an example. From your perspective, what is, what is it about this, let's just say, the last week, particularly the last two or three days on the programs we've had? So in that time, we probably had at least, uh, I don't know, 20. And uh, there's been like a, a, an acknowledgement or a recognition, and I'm going to say somewhat collectively, at least, at least folks that are in this circle, uh, talking about a sadness that came in, a sadness that came in, and it reminded me as I was getting through the shows and everything, I thought, wow, that feels like the energy of me having let go of this identity and that identity and this one and that one and this one and that one, as you're talking about. Is, is, is that a mass awakening? Is that uh, uh, what you've learned and others that have learned well, becoming mainstream, so to speak, in the ethers? The, there is no mass. There's, no, there's only one. Yeah. There, and and it's, if you say it quickly, it doesn't mean much. But right. if you really allow that to sink in, whatever it is that you're seeing, this thing that you're seeing in these, let's say, 20 shows that uh, seems to be consistent is a mirror for what's happening to you. Yeah. Now, you're telling me about it, so it's happening to me. <laughs> Until you told me about it, I could say it wasn't happening to me, but in fact it was, and I'll tell you how. Uh, just an hour or so ago, and I won't mention any names, but a friend of mine was talking to me about uh, being in, in sadness, being in sorrow. And I could feel right away that this was uh, a feeling of death. And of course, the death is not of the body, it's right. the death of identity, which is far more sorrowful than the death of the body, either yours or, or someone that's close to you. It's very, very sad to let go of yourself because the greatest fear there is is the fear of being nothing, yeah. of being extinct, of, of not existing. So this is the sorrow that's happening right now. Um, and of course, it's an enormous blessing uh, because anytime there is a, a mass uh, clearing of what's not true, it's like there's a spike in the energy of... Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm very careful with my words because anything that suggests separation um, doesn't just go away because you said it quick. It's right, still part right. of your life. So I don't use words that suggest separation. But uh, this is the self, the, the one self, dying to the illusion of this world. Yeah. Without giving it a lot of fanfare or talking about energies or dimensions or you know, entities or, you know, guys in spaceships or any of this kind of stuff, all of which is fine. It's wonderful if that's, if that resonates with the person. Uh, it's simply about the death of a lot of conditioning, which yeah. is like clouds in front of the sun that, of course, is always there. Yeah. You know, the real you is the sun or the absolute. So this is a wonderful, incredibly painful, but wonderful spike in the energy. And even as I'm saying this, it's, it's also an illusion. But uh, exactly. it's like the Course in Miracles talks about use the dream to wake you from the dream. Yeah. yeah. And so how does this 
Okay, you talk about the, tw- and, I, and I've heard this, the 26,000 years. I, I'd never heard the 10,000 uh, years of the patriarch and then going into this. But I have heard in the sacred text the 2,000 years of peace. And of course, looking at it metaphorically or linearly. We're in it right now. Yeah. We're in the beginning of it. It's a dream, just like reincarnation and, 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 uh, and karma are both dreams, but they're real within the dream. Yeah. So this scenario of cycles, this 26,000 year cycle, which is part of an even bigger cycle and, the, and part of an even bigger cycle, if you really go into this literature, all of which is a dream. It's a dream scenario that says that we're in a unique uh, phase that's never happened in our universe before. Well, this particular dream has never happened in our dream universe before. None of this is anything more than a great dramatic story. Yeah. It doesn't do anything for you. It's like knowing every Sanskrit word that there is in, uh, on the planet to explain things. It doesn't make you free. In fact, it could make you arrogant. Yeah. Um, it's wonderful to mention these things, and it's wonderful to know these things. If it resonates with you, that's, that's wonderful. But it doesn't make you free. It doesn't bring you back to the awareness of the fact that you are freedom. So this story of what's going on in the universe, the major changes, the fifth dimensional things that are supposedly happening, this is all wonderful, but all of these things, any of which uh, you can mention other than self-inquiry, are all time-bound. And if they're time-bound, they're part of separation. And if they're part of separation, they're a dream. Yeah. They're extremely useful from the perspective of shaking the stuck or stubborn the self. You haven't become the self. You didn't, you didn't gain the self. You didn't grow towards it. You didn't qualify for it. The clouds, which are represented by the person, uh, were temporarily out of the way, and the sun came up. So everybody's experienced this. Yeah. They just didn't realize how, how simple and how powerful it is. So when we resonate with the one thing that really turns us on, or the 10 things that really turn us on, and we lose ourself, we remember, you could say, who we really are. The, the idea, and this is called an epiphany, and, and, um, or a satori, or whatever name you want to give it, that the, the key is to have an unbroken string of satoris or, or epiphanies so that there is nothing else. Yeah. That's, that's freedom. That's when you return to who you really are. But and you're no longer here. Todd's no longer here. Yeah. He has a license like I have a license, but he's not here. So, yeah, because I equate it to, I equate it to, we're all up, well, we're one. And at some level, there's a fractal or something. Uh, or not. But there's a video game. I'm inputted in the video game as Todd, you're John. Right. And there's a basic template. So there's a level of predestination, but there's a free will kind of thing. No, there isn't. Not That's a dream too. What I was going to say is that there's a free will kind of thing, but the free will part of it, if it's there, actually isn't here. It was the choice to come in here. There's uh, a dream free will. That's very real. Yeah. So and then and then you have these stories of people very recently, these last two three years especially, of things just falling into place in their life. And, and the biggest resistance seems to be, how can this be happening? You know, I mean, how can this be? Ha- are you really there? I'm touching you. Like, is this really happening? Uh, is that part of just the natural cycle of this 2,000 years of balance? Within the dream, it is. Yes. Um, it's a natural phenomenon. And, and everybody will say, oh, my life is synchronistic. Uh, uh, everything is happening spontaneously. It's all flowing even the bad stuff is is coming into line yes that's all part of it this is not freedom uh this is balance but it's not freedom uh and you can you can sail through that period people will say well if you're not in 5d you can't be reborn into this frequency and that's true within the dream it's true but it's not real and and this is where spiritually oriented people including myself for most of my life get stuck in thinking that they're getting somewhere. There is no getting somewhere because there's no time and space. It's an illusion. Yeah. So yes, it's true, with, just like reincarnation and karma uh, and free will and control is true within the, dream. within the dream. But at some point in time, we have to say the dream is not enough. 
I, I want to let go of the dream because I'm totally satiated with the roller coaster ride of ups and downs. And I choose, I, I choose to go even beyond uh, Satchit Ananda uh, to, to one where there is none of that. Beyond that. You're so, before that. So would it be safe to say that we can't change anything externally? And that we can, if we can change anything, we can change ourselves? Uh, no, you can't change yourself. You can only reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. And you're, because your yourself is always one. It's never changing. Um, it, you can, for example, in self-discovery, which is one way of doing self-inquiry that's a little bit more complicated, but but sometimes the false self likes a little more complicated. So this is where you become very cognizant of the mirror of your world and the triggers that grab your attention. Um, someone cuts you off uh, while you're driving and you, you go into a rage, not necessarily road rage, but you go into a rage and it stays with you. This is a trigger. And if you're looking at yourself, you don't point your finger at the person that did it. You go in and say, what does this mean? Yeah. Going beneath the story into yeah. the energy and beneath the story is guilt, shame, remorse, and other unworthiness. Unworthiness is the taproot. It's the key to all conditioning. And this is why, for example, if I can just do a sidebar, uh, people uh, that have tried to manifest in the material dream, which I certainly did for many years, know the formula, uh, which is very simple. It's they have an intention. They have attention on the intention. They have belief. They have passion. And they, they throw in work. And, uh, and they will absolutely, for certain, if they have those things in place, they will manifest. Yeah. But they may manifest and then shoot themselves in the foot and sabotage what they have. Or they may manifest and be miserable, which was my situation, because there's a sense of unworthiness that exists. And the unworthiness is the taproot. And uh, that, that's tied into the, uh, the Garden of Eden story, which I can get into if you like. But... Uh, Essentially, uh, what happens is is self discovery is still a kind of a work oriented version of self inquiry. If you, you meaning anyone, uh, wants the direct, simple route to freedom, it's just simply who am I? Which is a thought comes up, situation comes up, a thought comes up, and you say, to whom does this thought arise? And the answer is obviously me. And then the question arises, who am I? But you don't answer the question. And what this does when it's done consistently is it exposes the false self, which withdraws because the false self is hidden in plain view. Nobody's looking at it. But as soon as you start to expose it, it backs off. It fades. And there's only one place for it to fade, and that's where it came from, which is consciousness. That fades back into consciousness which is the same as clouds fading. And yeah. when the clouds have faded, there's only one thing left, and that's you, the real you. That's, that's the, uh, the um, self-inquiry, who am I, absolutely dead simple, what I call C-spot run way yeah. of freedom. No strings attached. If you add to that total surrender, 100% surrender, no yeah buts, no except for this, 100% surrender, which I call letting life live you, then it's lightning fast how quickly you'll come to be aware of your freedom, the freedom that you are. And, and so in terms of manifestation, coming from somebody who was able to manifest things, as you, as you pointed out, and then you get to this point that you're speaking of, what does the experience come... What does this, the experience become? How is it different? What does that look like? I mean, uh, do you get, I mean, are you in a flow? Do things just come to you magnetically based on where you're at at that point? In terms well, of I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't give it a definition of how. You know, the mind, the false self wants to know how. Always it wants to know how. Go into any library or bookstore and 30% of it is based on how to. That's the mind. Um, and it's not none of our business. Uh, when we, we, as you say, let go and let God, um, when we let life live us, then everything that, that you, meaning anyone, requires in the moment for their highest purpose comes to them. 
that the concept of spontaneity becomes unbroken. The concept of miracles becomes unbroken to the point that the word spontaneity and miracles no longer means anything because it's normal. It's your normal way of life. Um, and so when you let life live you, no exceptions at all, everything that you require comes to you perfectly. <clears throat> you may not necessarily like the way it came, yeah. but that's none of your business. That's the false yeah. self saying, oh, I don't like this. I wish it, you know, it, it's somebody you know dies and, and they leave you a uh, million dollars. Um, oh, gee, you know, that was my favorite uncle. No, that's none of your business. Yeah. You can grieve, of course. Yeah. But there's also this gratitude thing underneath saying life is taking care of life in this particular scenario to bring me home. Yeah. And what Always was your, gratitude should be there. Always. Yeah. And what was your reference to the Adam and Eve story? Um, well, I, I love this metaphor. Uh, it's a wonderful metaphor. It completely screwed up, but it's a wonderful metaphor. Uh, that uh, God, um, uh, basically, I, I'm interpreting rather than going through the story, which everyone knows, God wanted to know itself. Actually, the absolute wanted to know itself. And so it creates consciousness as its body, which it calls God or I am. And, and then it creates an environment called the universe through, um, you could call it the law of separation or the belief in separation, which provides this opportunity for contrast for it to taste and savor itself through contrast. Yeah. And at some point in time, it reaches the stage where it's sufficiently so-called developed uh, that a, a human being can become self-aware. It's not self-aware of who it really is. It's self-aware of its individuality. And you could say that it's kicking itself out of the nest of self-awareness of who it really is. Now, when that happens, that's where Eve eats the apple and uh, the snake, which is just the Kundalini, the serpent fire, um, tricks her, not really tricking her. It's just simply convincing her to um, become aware of separation, which is knowledge. Um, and this then separates consciousness from one awareness to many awarenesses, individuality. Yeah. And so it seems to be that God, so-called consciousness, is throwing the divided parts, which we call male and female, but it's you know everything that it has an opposite, throwing it out of the consciousness of, of, of peace, which is the Garden of Eden. And what this does is creates anger, rage, and hatred towards God for abandoning it. And then it creates guilt because you are feeling guilty about being angry at God. And this generates unworthiness. I don't deserve because look at how terrible I am that I have condemned and judged God. This then sticks at the bottom level of conditioning as guilt, shame, remorse, and unworthiness. And it taints or colors all conditioning that exists throughout the universe. Let's just say in our little universe of, you know, let's say we know a few hundred or a few thousand people. Uh, if you look around, you'll see guilt, shame, remorse, and unworthiness everywhere. Coloring, tainting, um, blended into the fabric of one's conditioning, which is attachments, expectations, and identities. You'll see it everywhere. Yeah. Uh, for example, in codependent relationships, which is virtually every relationship. You'll see it everywhere. Until we look at this, uh, it will sabotage virtually everything, which is where chaos and conflict arise. Until finally we say we've had enough of it, I choose freedom. Now, with what you're saying is we're collectively getting to this point where we'll go into this 2,000 years of balance or whatever that period is. Or whatever balance, that yeah. Metaphor, uh, we're in it now. And uh, of it. yeah, so so really, all of this chatter, so to speak, uh, I guess on a wider and wider scale, so to speak, what is one will more and more of the space that it contains will will find that place that find that place of nothing, find that place of. Uh, let's say that the self, which is divided into 
let's say numberless entities, false selves, people, if you like, will find it easier uh, in a way, easier to make the no matter what choice to be free. Yeah. And so you could say that, that many ag, uh, aspects of this fragmented consciousness of which there is only one light seemingly in numberless beams uh, called you and I and all the rest um, will then find it easier to return home to full awareness of who they really are during you. that window. And then these stories, the stories being my life, your life, anyone's life, this is the, this is the gift. This is the mission and the gift. This is the, the prize. This is the dog chasing its tail, coming to that, coming to that conclusion that it was me all along. And then what do I do with this? this the stories and the dramas, the drama stories, uh, is, is what, if you like, God has created the universe for to play with itself and know itself, yeah. to savor itself. Um, so, yeah, it's a gift to itself, to our self, because we're that God. But at some point in time, it tires. Each individual ray of the one light tires, is satiated or frustrated by the roller coaster and says, I... There must be a better way. Um, if you know the Course in Miracles, Helen Schuckman um, was the um, the channel for that, and and she basically found this so-called channeling of Jesus come through her after she asked that question. There must be a better way. Yeah. And then this voice started to appear. Um, all of that, of course, is part of a dream as well, but it's a beautiful dream. Um, that's, what I, that's what I'm getting at. I'm not really talking about the storyline that has to do with the drama. I'm talking about the storyline that is the fairy tale, that is the fantasy, that is the reality that we're all one, as you described. Yes. But here we are in the video game, in this incarnation, in this realm, which by some, some degree of explanation or reality is an illusion. But it's not. Otherwise, why would we be doing what we're doing, which is what you said God wanted to know itself. So what I'm saying is once we have the knowledge, a certain level, we don't have to be walking on water. And you're living proof. I mean, once you have the knowledge of, of, of what this is, it would only make sense to me that we would apply, apply this freedom and this sovereignty to enhance the experience in the bliss as we've already yeah, been that, down in the that's, dust. That's the mind. That's the mind talk. It's the mind talking about uh, making the world a better place. Well, no, no, I'm talking about living. I'm talking about living. I'm talking about expanding in this experience. It may be that I'm an illusion, but I will only be Todd one time. So then another 26 years, year, yeah, thousand years comes and I go through a multi multitude of however many hundreds of thousands of lives. Each one of those is a precious nugget of gold. Otherwise, what's the point? What's the point is is the only question what's the, the point? point the point is god wanting to know itself creating an illusion called the universe yeah. and then let's say called an individual that plays in the field of dreams until it's tired of it and then returns home there is no universe when it returns home so it cycles again it cycles when you are still in the dream there are no cycles when you leave there's, the dream. there's a twenty six thousand year cycle yes and much bigger ones than that of course yeah, that exists within the dream but the point being what the point being is that in the micro 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 of i am god i am god i created this this is it everything right that's right so now that i have gotten past through all the bullshit and through all these dramas and these stories that we know are nothing, why why would I uh, why would I be here any longer, unless I would uh, apply my peace, my balance, uh, which may be nothing more than just relaxing and take it easy and and you know <laughs> don't take things so and but, but, you know what I mean? I mean it's I, like, I know what you mean, but that's yeah. the way the mind thinks. No, that's not what happens. You either leave, which many do, uh, obscure. Uh, uh, individuals that we've never heard of 
uh, that, that became self-realized, we'll call it, and then just left. Uh, but if they stay, they stay, I won't get into the stabilization of, of energy, but let, let's just say that they stay and, and they're visible. They're somewhere visible. They're in an ashram or whatever. They're there as a living example of the truth. And generally speaking, that living example is very silent, except they might have darshan or something like that, and they'd be answering questions uh, to the uh, devotees. Uh, but by and large, they are radiating truth as a living example of what truth is. And anyone that's been in the presence of a so-called guru or master or sage or seer or any of that sort of thing, for real, uh, can feel the difference instantly. Uh, they know there's something totally different. Like Amma. I'm sorry? Like Amma. Amma, the, the uh, spiritual leader, Indian spiritual leader. I, I, get what you're, I, get, I get what you're saying. Like Ram Das, when he took, uh, went to India and met the Maharashi and gave him five hits acid and all that happened, you know? That story, well, it's <laughs> like like Papaji or or yeah. Ramana or, or but but I, but I, but I I I am not trying to be difficult. I'm trying to learn. That's what this show is all about. Okay. Real time intel. So it's like I refuse to believe. First of all, that anything separate. I think we can take it too far where it becomes benign, where it becomes like oh my god, you know. That's the problem I have with the Far Eastern stuff, is because. It's almost like insignificant. Well, it's not insignificant. I'm here. I'm alive. The fact is, I don't know shit. And I don't think anyone else does. And how do we know we're not just going to be worm dirt? What I can accept is that the consciousness that is Todd Medina, or that aspect of the illusion that's Todd Medina, will only be here once. You know, I got to believe there's some type of connectivity in the universe because of these past parallel future lives that communicate with me as aspects of you and me and we and it. But what I'm trying to get at is if with all this wisdom, knowledge, whatever you want to call it, coming in, we're still living a life here. Now, if I choose to leave, that's different. But if I choose to stay, I'm going to stay and go out here and ride surfboards and motorcycles and, and do some stuff that's fun. That's the way I see it. And I don't mean to sound, uh, you know, sound, uh, what do you call it, hedonistic at all, because I'm not. I take it very seriously. But. I'm just trying to understand what do we do with this knowledge while we're still incarnated, living in this body, even if it's an illusion, there's got to be some value to it here. Or why would we be 99.99% conscious yeah. in this incarnation when we know there's all this infinite aspect to us, but we're 99% of the time conscious here? There's got to be a reason. I, I hear you. I hear you. I, I understand your question. There is only one reason for us to be here now. And that is to wake up. When I say wake up, totally wake up. It, it's not to, to improve our, our 3D life, our material life, to make that somehow better. No, no, I don't think so either. No, I don't think so either. I think, I think it goes a little bit higher than that. I think we're actually, you said it earlier, has this happened before? No. But has the cycles occurred over and over again? Yes. So... There's some type of omniscient, omnipotent power within us as we come to this realization where we're actually expanding the experience of creation, or as I say, expanding the outer breadth of Mother Universe. We're actually, by choice, taking it someplace uh, as we step into the unknown. As long you know, as you believe, you meaning anyone, as long as you believe there is a universe, then there's going to be a question mark about what is the universe for. The universe is not there. The world is not there. Todd is not there. The body that I'm looking at right now is not there. It's an illusion. It's a dream. But as long as, as we place our attention out there, we're going to be looking for a reason for it to be out there. And you'll never find the reason. It's like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. The ship still sinks. You still come back again and again and again until you turn inward and say, I want to know who I really am. That's, that's where I'm at. That's what I'm, I'm that's what I'm, I think we're saying the same thing. What I'm trying to say is when you've gone inward and many people are, and I think they can own it now, then you're left with this realization, these epiphanies, the string of revelations, and you're going, okay, what now? And so it's either a cruise control, I say this, 
I'm going down the grocery aisle uh, in the grocery market with a basket and I don't have to take anything off the shelf. Stuff just starts dropping into the basket, you know? So it's either I've never that. Asked this question. One, uh, never ask a question, what now? Never. Only the false self asks that question. It's saying, well, I've got this far in this so-called uh, journey or path, which is all about separation, because you're talking about time and space when you talk about a path. I've got this far, I've grown this far, I have this much wisdom, which, which means absolutely nothing. Uh, what now? This is all still just dreaming. It's not true. Mm. It doesn't bring you any closer to the truth. When you are aware of who you are, the question of what now never is asked. There is no question at all. But that's not acceptable to the to the false self. It it wants answers. No, I agree with that. But the whole I, the, the whole thing is, and I guess we're actually saying the same thing. I don't think there's words for it. I don't think there's an explanation for it. I think it's there's a no explanation for the infinite. That's for sure. You can't put a frame around infinity. Yeah. yeah. But you're there still. Is, there is but no you're. Question. But you're still there, and I'm here. Actually, you're still there, actually, and I'm here. Well, that. yeah. I mean, if we want to get to that. Yeah, yeah, then everything becomes insignificant. Everything it is, becomes it nothing. Is insignificant, and yet you can still have compassion. You can still have uh, a degree of uh, respect yeah. for what uh, other aspects of yourself are going through. So you don't just say, oh, well, it's all a dream, so it doesn't matter. That's, that's, not, that's not anyone that, that's in truth would ever say that. Uh, that's just flippant. Uh, but you still know when you are in the awareness of who you are, you still know that there is no time and space. There's no computer. There's no internet. There's no, there's no galaxy. There's no universe. None of this exists. It's just a dream story. And it's all about waking up to who you really are. That's it. And if you remain behind, it's only as an example of truth to illustrate to other aspects of yourself that are still sleeping. I can, I can accept that. I accept that. I, I still think we're, I, I personally think we're all beating at the same vibration. It just doesn't look that way. Yes. Yes. We, we are already so-called self-realized. Yeah. They're just clouds in front of that awareness. Nobody is getting anywhere. Nobody's growing. Nobody's getting better. Nobody's, you know, taking a 16 week webinar to, to, you know, be more peaceful that actually gets anywhere. But if it brings them, further into the commitment of no matter what, which is the key, go inside, no matter what, allow life to live you, then the awareness of who you really are will come like lightning. But that's the thing, because it's spelled death. You must die to who you are. And that's where most spiritual people so far uh, have not reached. Yeah. But they will because things are, are moving so quickly and the, the air is clearing, you could say, metaphorically. The air is clearing and it makes it so much easier to see this. And, of course, when you see more and more and more people that are becoming lighter and lighter and lighter, uh, it's like saying, uh, yeah, I, I, can, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. And yeah. And, I, and, you know, all we have is right here. That's it. And that's why I see it. I mean, if, if we... Uh, if we go back to one, which is fine and dandy, but we came from there. I mean, obviously, we're, in, we're. I guess what I was saying is when you get to that level of awakening and that whole let let go and let God, let life happen to you, that is, that's all there is. And that's it. That's what I guess what I'm trying to say is it's like take the effort out. Just chill the F out, <laughs> you know. It's completely effortless. Yeah. Like, that's sure right. It's extremely yeah. difficult, but effortless. Which but what you, is what like you're, a what, dichotomy. Yeah, what you're saying is, is that in the effortlessness is the point, is that point, and at that point you can either say, "I'm done, get me out of here," or you can hang around and be a living example to others, other aspects of you. Yeah, you can you can say it like that. Yeah, but you don't make that decision. To, it's like the the one um, that you are uh, chooses to remain for a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't mean from this level. <laughs> I meant from. No, I, I know, that. but you know, we're, we're kind of confined with words sometimes. <laughs> absolutely, that's absolutely. Yeah. So you've got, so you've got twenty-four books. You've yeah. got 
uh, a book out recently. There's an excerpt in the comments. Can you just uh, give uh, give everybody a little backdrop before we conclude on what you what you do, how they can find you, uh, what you might have coming up, that type of thing, or anything else? Well, in in, in the links that I provided, there's my website. Uh, there's my my book uh, site on Amazon where all my books are. Um, there is a free um, uh, audio version of You Are God, which is one of my most recent books. Um, and, um, and there's an archive of uh, probably three years worth of the articles that I post virtually every day on self-inquiry. Um, so all of those will be in the info section of the YouTube that you're going to produce, I assume. Um, as far as uh, upcoming things, I don't do seminars, I don't do webinars, I don't do teaching. If anything, I'm an unteacher. Um, and I don't counsel. Uh, if someone comes to me that has made the no matter what choice, um, of which there are a few, that I talk to them. I don't charge anything. Uh, I just talk to them whenever it comes up. I got you. Uh, because I know that they have chosen to be free for real. Yeah. Or to remember their freedom for real. Uh, so that just happens. They find me. Yeah. Um, I don't promote. I don't advertise. I don't do any of those things because life lives me totally. Yeah. I don't make any decisions, any choices. I don't do anything except for respond to the moment. Yeah. Do you, I, get, do you ever get triggered? Or like as some, as a lot of people refer to, like the energies are coming down. Hey, the energies are coming down. They're kicking Not anymore. Ass. No. 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 There, nothing sticks anymore. I get echoes, but the echoes are from the collective full self. You know, I can feel it. Uh, I, can, I can feel when the world is moving in a certain direction, yeah. um, whatever it may be. Let's say there's a terror attack. I can feel the, the global fear, uh, but it's not mine. And so there's just an expression of compassion and love that, that emanates without any thought. As soon as you think, it's not real. Yeah. So where do you think the collective is now? I'm sorry. Where do you think the collective stands now, collectively? The the collective? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I know you said well, that we're in the beginning yeah. of the two thousand years of balance, but I mean. Oh well, we're 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 in. <laughs> pardon me again. The, the shitstorm of the the balancing of uh, the uh, divine masculine, which is totally dysfunctional patriarchy, uh, as it always happens, uh, as it leaves. Um, being balanced by the divine feminine. So you see indications of, of enormously powerful feminine energies springing up all over the place. Um, and these are part of, of the energy that influences other, it's like a match lighting many candles. Um, and so this creates a, a collapsing uh, of dominoes um, as the balancing, not the elimination, but the balancing of masculine and feminine come together. So you have the teeter-totter in the middle. And at the beginning, it looks scary. It looks terrible. It looks like the world's going to hell, but it's not. It's actually the opposite of that. As, as all of this, this so-called imbalanced energy becomes balanced. Yeah. And then gradually, you'll see little windows of light where, where beauty shines through. Uh, and if you're if you're sort of focused inward, you'll see a lot more of that than let's say others that are focused on the on the fear. They're looking out there. Yeah. Uh, so there's enormous fear, but there's also enormous light if if you are open to it, not looking for it. We yeah. don't look for it because that's time and space. Um, if we just simply go inside, we'll see that the light. It's not getting bigger. The light never changes. It never gets bigger. It just becomes more. You become more aware of the fact that it's always been there. Yeah. And so it's easier now to see this incredible light, which is balancing, not destroying, balancing yeah. uh, the imbalance. Yeah. But so you, you could say like the tale of two cities, it's the worst of times, it's the best of times. Our, our greatest strength is our greatest weakness. <laughs> Something like that. Man, I loved it. That was a fast hour. I sure uh, appreciate you coming in. Love to collaborate with you in the future. You're like a, like a, uh, a library. <laughs> well, I hopefully uh, my library is empty now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you guys check out uh, check out his website and the links that are uh, going to be on the post and on the one on YouTube. 
it did go through on Facebook. Uh, thank you so much, Don McIntosh. Hope to see you again. Thank you and for having me. I appreciate it very much. Uh, so wonderful work that you're doing. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. You yeah. take care. I think you're going to see a little bright light uh, shine in, in what you're doing shortly. Just a little feeling. You know I what I mean. I respect that feeling. Yeah. I respect that feeling. Thank you for the alignment. See you Thank soon. you so much. Much love to everyone. You take care.